Hey everyone, welcome back to the Poplar Report. We're going to be going to some different stores. We're going to go to Dollar Tree. We're going to go to Walmart, go to Aldi, see what shortages we're seeing on the shelves here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, to give you a better idea of what's missing out there and what issues are. Uh, please do keep your reports coming in, but let's dive right into it. All right, we're going to start over here at Aldi. One of the big things I noticed at Aldi was uh, some of the specialty eggs seem to be a little bit shy. And of course, as we go across the dairy section, we're going to see some pretty significant shortages. Uh, not just at Aldi, but we're also going to see very similar things over at Walmart. So take these things down because uh, we're seeing issues with cottage cheese, uh, sour cream, and some of these other uh, like dairy kind of products, we're seeing issues with those in supply. Uh, here at Aldi, uh, cream cheese as well, though we're not seeing as much of a cream cheese shortage over at Walmart. Um, please do keep sending your reports, guys, on what you guys are seeing at your stores, uh, because that's different from region to region, but this is for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, also, with the pork products like sausages and hot dogs, we're seeing some issues there. Uh, bacon is a little bit lower on supply as well, um, but nothing mission critical, so to speak. You can just get a different product or a different brand and you're still good. Uh, one of the things I want to point out here in the canned meat section. Uh, one, seeing how much more canned fish is taking up of this section. Less meat, more, uh, more fish. And that's just, that's what's happening right now. Also, as they make the transition from uh, the name brand corned beef hash back over to their, their private label corned beef hash, they are kind of making that transition, which is why the gap there. But they still don't have the canned hams. Um, if you're looking for protein to stock up on, one of the cheaper options that you can use out there are still Vienna sausages. Vienna sausages are a great way to get lots of cheap animal protein. Um, you can do that if you like them, uh, great. If you don't like them, uh, maybe some of the people in your family like them, but definitely something to look into if you're looking for cheap animal protein to stock up on. Uh, the Idahoan mashed potatoes, gone. Just the generic version here. We're seeing issues with that um, over at Walmart too. We're seeing the name brand uh, mashed potatoes are uh, just, they're having more and more issues. It looks like some of the companies are getting out of the whole uh, instant mashed potatoes uh, for the name brand. And it just seems like more and more generics are taking over. Uh, this stuff is great stuff to stock up on. If you're looking for a long-term uh, food storage, like instead of looking at those bucket companies, um, you can make a lot cheaper by just stocking up on instant mashed potatoes, right? Uh, because instead of spending 10 plus dollars per person per day on the food buckets, um, these instant mashed potatoes used to eat these things on the, on the trail when I was backpacking, same thing with the stuffing and uh, you just add hot water there and you got an instant meal right there. Good stuff. Um, and I don't know, if you're anything like me, I like those mashed potatoes too. So uh, they're a good thing to stock up on. The potato flakes don't quite taste quite as good and they, they need things added to them. With the vegetable oils, we are seeing issues with vegetable oils and we have been seeing those for quite a while, but we haven't been seeing like such an acute shortage. Uh, just right now, things are going pretty good with soybean oil, canola oil, corn oil, all that kind of stuff like that. But what we're really seeing issues are on the specialty oils as well as olive oils across the board. If it's healthy for you, <laughs> we're having shortages of it. That's just what it seems like to be right now. Um, olive oils are short, uh, mostly due to the shortage of uh, really bad crop harvest in Italy as well as Spain. They had bad olive harvests and that has caused significant issues in the global olive oil market. Um, they're having shortages over in Italy, they're having <laughs> shortages over in Spain, uh, and they're not happy about that. Uh, but the, a lot of the olive oils here in the United States are mixed with other seed oils, uh, so you have to look very closely, and a lot of times you can't even see it marked on the packages. Um, with uh, tomato, uh, tomato juice, there was just less of it on the shelf, kind of took a picture of that for you. Also, hot cocoa, just gone. Just no hot cocoa whatsoever at Aldi. Um, I know it's getting to the end of the uh, winter season, but still, uh, they, that seemed to be kind of notable. Uh, also, they seem to be running real low on those, uh, those jars of uh, coffee over there, um, the single-serve stuff. 
Um, but um, moving over to Walmart, and we got a whole bunch of stuff to cover here at Walmart. Uh, but the first thing that struck me right in the face was the fact that they had some uh, pretty big outages when it came to uh, lettuce and in the produce section. Now, we've been getting warnings from produce managers from around the United States saying, hey, um, there's issues with produce and uh, be aware of that. And it's going to be for the next month or so because of issues down in Florida as well as issues down in California. A lot of the flooding over in California has impacted a lot of the lettuce. Um, so there's that going on. Before we get into any more at uh, Walmart here, let's uh, thank our sponsor, Genesis Gold Group. Um, if you have a retirement account, 401k, IRA, this is one of the best times in the world uh, to get out of high-valued stocks. Stocks are at all-time highs, a lot of them are. Uh, getting out of those and moving over into value, budget, uh, gold, silver, and platinum, uh, it's priced at bargain prices right now. Uh, if you uh, call Jonathan and his team directly, do mention this channel so that they do waive your setup fee. Uh, that saves you hundreds of dollars. So um, you, there'll also be a link at the end of the video. All right. So uh, in the frozen food section, uh, we're seeing continued issues with, with breakfast, frozen breakfast things, frozen bread things, frozen snacks and whatever, and also frozen uh, potatoes. Uh, they these uh, taters, uh, hash brown and taters are just not uh, stocked very well. Uh, we're not having a critical frozen potato issue, but we're having some issues with that. So uh, um, if you're really needing a specific kind of potato, make sure you grab it uh, when you see it. Uh, applesauce is down across the board uh, over at Aldi as well as other stores. It just... We're not getting as much applesauce back from China. We send our apples over to China and then they process them and send them back as applesauce. I, I know it doesn't make much sense, but that's just what happens for a lot of this stuff. Um, so a lot of this applesauce, it's like apples from America and stuff like that. You just look at the labels and you can kind of see how they're mincing the words, but uh, uh, they're actually being packaged over in places like China and elsewhere. Uh, but we're not getting as much applesauce back. And that's what we're seeing here is, is just... Not enough there. Uh, with the coffee section, a little light there um, on Folgers, but what I really want to focus in on is how much they've shrunk the great value coffee. Um, I, I, I don't know how much difference there is between the great value coffee and, and Folgers and stuff like that, but what I do know is that the generic section has gotten awfully small uh, when it comes to coffee. They don't seem to have enough coffee uh, at any given time. And if you get there late, um, if you get there after work or in the evening, you're just seeing most of those co uh, the generic coffee gone. Over in the tomato section, uh, salsas, that type of thing, saw a bunch of gaps there. And they just can't keep it all in stock, I guess. Uh, with the vinegars, two apple cider vinegar gallon jugs there and just empty space behind them. And when it comes to the white vinegar, some of that was a little bit low here when we're looking at the generics on the left-hand side. So just uh, I'm seeing, some, seeing, seeing some more issues there with vinegar. And I don't think so many people are canning right now. But um, And then when it came to barbecue sauces and ketchups, just an just unusual amount of, of, of issues here and there. Just lots of products just kind of missing. Uh, when it comes to the meat adjacent uh, type products, corned beef hash, chili, um, they seem to just keep expanding the chili sections. I mean, just ridiculous amounts of options on chili. And one of the things about chili is that they, they never actually claim how much meat is in those chili. It's just like, oh yeah, it's got beef in it somewhere. Uh, sure it does. Um, and that's why it seems like that just keeps uh, moving forward. Vienna sausages on the shelf there. Like I said, a good good option for stocking up. If you get the 12 packs, um, you're looking at fairly decent prices there. Notice uh, the spam here. Uh, you got the regular spam there at eye level, but uh, notice all the flavored spam is up at the top shelf um, and out of reach of most short people. Um, I, at 5'11", could get at that bottom can up there, but probably not the second can up there. And uh, that just kind of tells you how 
they're just kind of putting that a little bit out of reach just to make, make it kind of hard. So you have to ask somebody to come get that for you. Uh, they don't want, uh, they seem to be having a little bit of a, issues with the, uh, with the flavored stuff. Um, so that's uh, one thing. The canned chicken has definitely, that's definitely all over the place there. But $5 for a two can pack is, uh, that's a little rich for my blood. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you need to get stocked up on canned chicken, you can do that still. Um, if you're willing to pay four forty six dollars for one can, yikes. Um, and that's those cans over there and then two seventy eight dollars over there. Plenty of Keystone ground beef, Keystone beef as well. Um, those are good options for stocking up that way. Uh, when it comes to the tuna fish, uh, less and less generic tuna fish options and more and more name brand stuff. That whole top shelf is all name brand stuff. And then over half of that bottom shelf is name brand stuff as well. Uh, there's no generic else. <laughs> it's just all lots and lots of name brand uh, fish. So. Uh, like I said, over at the mashed potato section here uh, at Walmart, uh, it looks pretty well stocked. Uh, but one of the things I, I've noticed is that they have had a number of companies like uh, Hungry Jack has gotten completely out of the business of making mashed potatoes. They now have this Mountain Harvest mashed potatoes, whatever that is, uh, just to give you a third option between Great Value, Idahoan, and now Mountain Harvest. Uh, they've taken over a whole shelf up there to put gravy up there. The stuffing has expanded and they don't even have that fully stocked. Uh, it just seems like they're just playing games everywhere we go in the store. But if you want to get stocked up right now, you can. Um, I don't think I took a picture of the rice section. The rice and beans looked fairly well stocked. But again, um, they used to have like you know, five or six 20 pound bags of rice, generic rice there. Uh, now they have like two and that seems full. Uh, it just, they keep changing the goalposts so it's hard to kind of see what's going on with things. Uh, but we definitely see a lot less of the cheap generic rice and a lot more of the name brand rices. Uh, sorry, well, with the spaghetti sauce section, one of the things I want you to notice here is where's all the generic stuff? Now we have the organic uh, generic right there in front of you over on the right. But then everywhere else that you see a hole, that's like where the generic great value uh, spaghetti sauce of that would be, like the great value meat sauce and the great value um, onions and you know whatever. All those different kinds of great value spaghetti sauce is missing except for the organic version of that, which is you know more expensive, of course. So we saw that and then over here, uh, at the pasta section, uh, we, we see their trial version of the elbows in, pl in plastic bags, right? Uh, interesting, that's right next to the elbows in boxes still. So uh, you can figure out which one you want to vote for. But over at Aldi, they had moved most of their um, pasta over into bags already. So most of their pasta is already in these uh, little bags. And I think Walmart is probably going to move over that way for like this rotini, the penne, uh, rigatoni, bow ties, uh, and elbows and shells. I think they're probably all going to be moving over to bags uh, because it's a little bit cheaper. And uh, that, that be bracing for that. that. That's what it looks like we're headed towards uh, in the very near future. And then this whole section next to the pasta section, uh, which is like this discount clearance section for pasta. And it's just like these random items that are just taking up a lot of space and they're discounted. Um, so I, they're clearing out this area for something or they're just taking up all this area because that pasta section is a lot smaller than it used to be. Um, so it just seems like they're playing these games everywhere we go um, where they're just taking up as much space as they can with random things uh, in order to shrink the size of the flour section, shrink the size of the sugar section, sh shrink the size of the pasta section, shrink the size of the pasta sauce section. It's just one thing after the next. They don't want to have as much stuff on the shelf. 
And uh, over in the olive oil section, uh, some of this is fronted. So some of these areas look pretty good, but then uh, if you look behind them, there isn't anything back there. Uh, and some of these uh, gaps where some people have grabbed a bottle or two from the front, um, you can see that that just caused a big gap there. Uh, the vegetable oils like soybean and canola oils, they're mostly stocked, but again, they're, they're playing games here. You see a lot of this Wesson and Mazzola and Crisco and all these new name brands of, of, all, uh, of vegetable oils. It used to be just great value oils and then just like a little bit of name brand stuff, but like nobody ever bought that. Now it seems like half the space is taken up by name brand oils. Uh, and it seems like they just can't keep the, uh, the generics on the shelf long enough. And they're just playing those games. Uh, we seem to have enough plain salt, but the iodized salt was a little bit light there um, for the generics. And then of course there's name brand salts for people who like expensive salt for some reason. Um, I'm sorry, I alluded to this already, but um, this whole section has just appeared. It's just like goji berry powder and all these different fake flowers, like cauliflower flour and maca powder flour, coconut flour. Um, this whole section has just appeared and it's taking a big chunk out of the flour section as well as uh, making the sugar section a lot smaller too. The sugar section is noticeably smaller. It's about, um, I'd say about a third smaller than it was uh, just, just weeks ago. Uh, oatmeal, uh, there's plenty of oatmeal there, it looks like, generic as well as name brand. Uh, not fully stocked, but uh, oatmeal is also a good thing to stockpile. Uh, if you buy one of those food buckets, again, you know, I'm on a hobby horse now, right? Uh, but if you buy those giant food buckets, I would say like a third of your calories are going to be like just quick oats. Um, that, that's what they do. They, they, they want to make you breakfast or whatever. And they always seem to like want to put like oatmeal as your breakfast. Friends, you can just go buy that and repackage it yourself, right? You, you buy a couple of these tubes of oatmeal and you just repackage that. And you, you're basically as good as you have uh, in those uh, giant food buckets and for a heck of a lot cheaper. Uh, you're going to need, need to restock, uh, re, um, put it into new packaging though. Now they have had some issues with these, uh, with these granola bars. Uh, so the oatmeal bars and stuff like that. I don't know why they're having issues with that before, but uh, they just didn't seem to be able to uh, keep those in stock. It seems like that has gone away. We seem to be good now on that. Uh, when it comes to um, syrups and, and, and maple syrup, fake maple, maple syrup, uh, they seemed a little bit low. So I grabbed a picture of that for you. Uh, eggs at Walmart were two seventy eight a dozen. That was about where they were over at Aldi as well. Um, that's for a dozen here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Supply of eggs seems to be just fine, just the prices are up. When it comes to a bunch of these uh, baking things, uh, cookie dough and, and some of those um, other doughs that use eggs and stuff like that, uh, they seem to be a little bit low. And then, of course, when we get over to the dairy section, this whole section has been squeezed. This is about half the size it used to be. And, uh, and there's still a whole bunch of gaps. Uh, sour creams uh, and just can't get the stuff that you really want. The cottage cheese and the sour cream kind of blending together there. Um, it, was, it was hard. I was just looking for a, a thing of sour cream myself. And there just didn't seem many options for the generic sour cream for the sizes. And of course the dips have gotten a lot smaller too. Uh, margarines and uh, fake butters. Uh, the butter seemed to be fairly well stocked, but the fake butter uh, was pretty low. This section is smaller than it used to be as well. And they don't have that nearly full. Uh, they can't keep the tea uh, on the shelf there. The, the, the jugs of tea having issues there. Half and half, look at that. Almost half the half and half is gone. Uh, that's just, uh, that's not how that's supposed to be. That almond breeze is not supposed to be there. That's supposed to be half and half. Over to the other uh, coffee creamers. A lot of coffee creamers out and missing. Uh, that's what we're seeing there. And then when I got over to the cleaning section, uh, there was a lot of Lysol products missing. 
I don't know if there's an issue there. I'll be looking into that a little bit more, but uh, just want to give you a heads up that some of the cleaning products uh, were just kind of gone. And that's a lot of the antiseptic sterilization type uh, products. Um, I looked over at the bleach section. Bleach section seems to be fairly well stocked, but notice the Lysol uh, bleach up there in the upper left-hand corner. That's all fronted. Uh, there's nothing behind it. And uh, so seemed to be, might be something to do with Lysol. Uh, they might be having some issues. Oh, this is an interesting one. Uh, 25 bucks for a, a cheap DVD player at Walmart. Friends, I can't recommend enough that if you, uh, if you like your TV and all that kind of stuff like that, you should really be stocking up on DVDs because um, if you have a DVD of something or a Blu-ray of something, you own that forever until you scratch it, right? Uh, these streaming services, you don't own anything, and they can just jack up the prices on you. And if they all jack up the prices on you, then you're just kind of stuck with that. But having a DVD library of TV shows and, and, and movies and stuff like that that you like to watch or whatever can save you a lot of money in the long haul. But I thought about grabbing a DVD, one of these cheap DVD players as like a backup DVD player, but um, I probably would prefer that it would be a Blu-ray since I've been picking up a bunch of Blu-rays recently. But just a thought for you, um, over at the canning aisle, uh, they seem to be quite well stocked, except for the Golden Harvest uh, cans have been disappearing, the jars. And that makes sense because uh, Golden Harvest jars are basically just ball jars in Canada. Uh, they just have a different brand up there. And uh, they brought them down and started putting them on the shelves because they couldn't keep enough uh, ball jars on the shelves. So they started putting a golden harvest jars down there as well. Uh, well, it looks like they don't need the golden harvest jars anymore, so they, they've sold them off on clearance. Um, that, those look like some pretty good prices. I wish I grabbed them when, when they were there. Uh, but uh, you may see golden harvest disappearing out there, and don't be too worried about it. It's got the ball jars. Anyway, uh, this is over at Dollar Tree. Uh, a lot of the battery section, I don't know if uh, Dollar Tree is really the best place to buy, buy batteries anyway. All those batteries don't seem to last at all. Um, so I, I think Amazon's probably the cheapest place to get batteries right now. Uh, maybe Walmart if you get a good deal or something. But um, every time uh, Amazon has like a really good sale, they, they put their batteries on sale too. So that's usually the best price. Uh, but across Dollar Tree, they're just not able to keep things in stock. Like picture frames, how can you not, I mean, how many of them are they really selling per day? They can't keep them in stock. Toilet paper and paper towels, can't keep that in stock. Uh, as you just go around the Dollar Tree, you just see just empty shelf after empty shelf after empty shelf. Uh, like I said, I don't know how long, much longer they're going to be able to stay in business because they just can't restock fast enough. All right, folks, please do let us know what you're seeing out where you are. This is my report from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Thanks so much for watching. Steve Poplar of the Poplar Report, out.